Happy Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday. that day. Uh, second episode uh, of the week. Mm -hmm. If you're a Patreon, you know exactly how many episodes we do a, a week. Uh, is there extra? Where yep. we can talk about anything. At all. Anything we want. Yep. Uh, usually we end up talking about the same kind of stuff. Because it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we do anyway. Right. I'm glad everybody's joining us. Uh, mm -hmm. well, chat room's already got a couple folks in it. Welcome back to the chat room. We appreciate you coming back. It's a little it's a little confusing with YouTube when we do the live show, which we yeah. do Thursday nights at eight o'clock. Uh, we stop at the end of the the episode. We call it that's the main content, and then we take a little break and we come back. And uh, you have to like shut out. You have to close out YouTube and reopen it in order to properly get back. So thanks to anybody that went the trouble of. Uh, coming back and catching us on the on the extra or if you are just an extra viewer that's true i hadn't thought of that you know that's a good that's a good thought there could just We're be glad you're here. extra viewers yeah yeah thanks i still have the I still have the camera shot set up for my hat that's oh yeah there we go although you know it's a different day that's true because i'm wearing a headband oh that's right it's a totally different day i'm wearing a different totally shirt different day it just happens to be exactly the same cut style yeah. and color as the shirt I was wearing last Thursday. Well, I'm still a unicorn, but I took it off and washed it. And <laughs> yeah. Put it back on. Probably should have washed the shirt. Anyway, we still got stuff left over from the from the episode stuff. Yeah. There, there's some good stuff here. I, uh, if if you watch the if you didn't watch the episode 15, we're up to 15 now. <laughs> if you didn't watch episode 15, uh, this week I gathered a bunch of links a bunch of happenings and i did not tell bailey what they were nope I'm and so idea. we're kind of going through and uh talking about them we uh talked about oh it's been so long ago uh last thursday oops we're having a little bit of net congestion give me just a minute looks like looks like daddy's gonna be editing this one a little bit oh no there we go maybe it'll that. Yeah, I've learned to to just stop whenever we start getting the red lights. Yeah, that's, that's smart. Because the recording doesn't work then either. Ah. Uh, so when I see. when we get the red lights, the recording is as messed up as the as the stream. So mm. uh, we're we're good now. It looks like. Uh, where was I? Uh, let's see. We still. Oh, have it's been things. a week. Yeah. <laughs> four days. Uh, it's, it's been four days. Uh, we talked about uh, renaming of Martin Luther King, something Street, mm -hmm. Street. Parkway. Boulevard. Boulevard. Uh, it's still kind of up in the air. It seems like they've settled on uh, Parkway. Uh, you'll have to go back and watch episode 15 uh, to find out more about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Talked about Tooth a Day is going to be... Actually, they have not played yet. That's going to be on the 15th. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> I mean, I don't need a calendar to see... To I don't need a calendar to see what day today is, right? Of course I do. Uh, yes, that... Is That's tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be a that'll be a good show. I just like I like plugging that band whenever I can. They're they're pretty fun, uh, and and such nice people. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah, here yeah. here's the one, and this is this is a uniquely local, growing pain thing. But yeah. it's but it's a conversation I've had with people, and it just keeps coming up. Hmm. And I didn't realize this until okay. Let me back up. I'm a big fan of the farmers market. Uh, during the season, I do everything I can to get down to the farmer's market and load up on my veggies for the week. And uh, sometimes, usually it's the John City Farmer's Market. Often it's the Asheville Farmer's Market. It just depends on where I'm at. Uh, a couple times I went to the Chattanooga's Farmer's Market because uh, I'm, I'm on the road a lot in the summer. Well, I went to the Jonesboro Farmer's Market because one day I, I, had, I got up early, no reason. I was wide awake. I'm going to do all the farmer's markets I can. I went to the John City Farmer's Market. Yeah, it's all right. It was still early in the season. Mm -hmm. Go to Jonesboro, see what it is. Jonesboro was a totally different kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And at first I was a little bit disappointed. I was like, well, I was kind of hoping to find more veggies and more stuff here. And that's when a friend of mine that had a booth explained to me that Jonesboro's Farmer's Market has a very strict rule that all stuff that is sold there has to be made by the people that run the booth. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're selling produce, all the produce has to be grown by you or by that family, that, mm -hmm. that unit. Uh, if you make, if you're selling honey, 
you you have to have made all the honey and sell the honey so everything is made by the people that are selling it at the jonesboro farmers market and you know they've got a nice kitchen they have an industrial kitchen down there in jonesboro where they can uh Oh, just some great stuff comes out of it. But it's, it seems smaller, I think, because mm. they have those more strict restrictions. Because that's a lot of work. It's a lot of investment now. And I, I say that because it's in the Johnson City Press this week. Uh, group voices concern over grocery produce sold at Johnson City Farmer's Market. The Johnson City <laughs> Farmer's Market has the rule that 50% of your product has to be uh grown by the owner or i don't or think produced um it has to be grown within 100 miles oh i'm sorry yes i'm sorry right um yeah but the other 50 percent can come from elsewhere right and that's the thing farmers must grow at least 50 50 percent of produce is farmers must grow at least 50 percent of the produce sold at the market the other 50 percent sold may come from outside sources and this came out of it was an article that showed up in the john city press of quite a few weeks ago now that uh, one activist was uh, surprised to find a grocery store a sticker. price sticker yeah. on the onion. And they were like, wait a minute, where where did this come from? And so half of this farmer's mm-hmm. produce was from a commercial uh, retailer, mm-hmm. from a grocery store, basically. And that really rubs some people the wrong way. Uh, a lot of people want a farmer's market to represent local yeah. everything and a, a group I want to get this right because it, it was and, and they have a really good point i'll read it here in just a second <laughs> actually i think it's just a facebook group i don't know that they have a a clear name no anyhow uh they want these farmers to uh sell 100% self-grown, made, locally sourced products, which is fine, but how is that going to change what we we expect from a farmer's market? For people like me, I shop the farmer's market because I need produce. Yeah. I don't want to go to the grocery stores. I prefer to get it from someone whose face I recognize. I know these people have farms. I know they grew a lot of this stuff. I don't particularly care if half of it comes from a grocery store as long as they make it clear which one which what I'm buying was was not grown by them and as long as I'm not paying more for it. Yeah, um I can see that. I I tend to agree with these people that 100% of what is sold should be made by the person selling it or or should be sourced by someone within a certain uh, ge- uh, certain radius. Right. Because for me, farmers markets, the reason I go to farmers markets is to get local produce. And yeah, I guess if there was a sign saying, this is our local stuff, this is the stuff we just picked up from Kroger or wherever they pick it up, um, that would maybe sort of fix that problem. But I tend to think of farmers markets as an implicit, like when you go to a farmers market, there's sort of an implicit understanding that it's local stuff, whether that is true or not. Right. And I kind of think, you know, if a lot of it, if half of it can come from some outside source, well, the truth is I would just rather go to the grocery store because going to the grocery store for me is easier. I have to make an effort to go get local produce. And if I go to get it, and half the stuff I'm bringing home is just stuff I could get at Kroger. For me, it ruins it. I think what we're going to see if they do... Because the the, the board, uh, I should say, one, one of the people that had that criticism got elected to the board. They created a new board position to represent uh, the people who sell. At, at the I mean, just represent the sellers. And she's working to move them in that direction. They're going to discuss it. They're going to run it through. But my concern, and this is what I face every time I go to the Jonesboro kind of farmer's market and, and smaller markets like it, is everyone is selling the same thing. Every time I go, everyone has the same crops. But here's the thing. I, I see how that could be a problem, but 
if you want to avoid that issue, to me, that's just go to the grocery store then. If that is an issue that bothers you, that there's the same crops. Right, but the fact that I hand that money over to a farmer, that makes me feel better that they're profiting from it. I mean, they're not they're not just passing along. They're, they're not buying it from a grocery store for full price and passing it no. along to the to the consumers, they're going to take their cut. They're go- they are making money off of everything they sell, even if it's less profit than if they grew it themselves. But I I shop the farmers market because I hate shopping commercial yeah. uh, but, businesses. But the thing is, you're still helping the commercial businesses That's by fine. shopping from them. I'll, I'll I'll go with the one that has the best quality. You mean the farmer? I'll go with one that has the best quality. I've been to many. F- I've seen many farmers at the farmer's market. They are not, they do not have produce that's better than what I can get at a store. Yeah. And that's, and it's usually not tomatoes and, and it's, it's usually something more specialized, but generally it is, but I'm just saying I would rather go for the quality of the thing. I am not so worried about protecting the local. It's, I don't, I don't see it as protecting the local market because all they're doing is expanding their offering. And I and I, my my thing about it about not wanting it doesn't have anything to do with protecting the local market. For me, it's a personal choice of I want to eat food grown in Washington County. Yeah, no, I, I want to grow. Yeah, and even I and, like I, like I said at the beginning though. Yeah, I I want to know which was yeah. grown on their farm and which was not. It probably won't affect my my choice of buying it, but it might. I just want that little bit of extra information, and that I totally can agree on. And personally, I guess for me too, um, part of the reason it bugs me is because it seems so fucking shady. Yeah? To me. Like, if you're not telling people, and I shop at the uh, John City Farmer's Market, and I know for a fact, I've never seen anyone there say, this is not mine. No. And to me, that's super shady. I see what you mean. I mean, I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, especially when you want to know the source of your food. Yeah. If, if that is very important to you, uh, you're just not going to be able to do that. Uh, yeah. Not knowing which is which are artificially ripened tomatoes and which are grown on the vine at the mm-hmm. farm. But I've, I'm, a, I'm just worried that that's going to make more of the small farms stop bothering, and then you're going to have more of these big, big farms buying up more and more of your farmer's markets. Do you think that's what happened in Jonesboro? No. No. Well, in, in Jonesboro, it, it's more, they have they just specialize in the one one thing. To me, there there's not a lot of variety there compared to the Johnson City one. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, and I, I bought a lot of stuff there regardless. But if you go to Asheville, which does have those rules, uh, you see lots of mega, just, huge farms with these huge uh, booths. I mean, they hang, they have tents that are just packed with stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I had a CSA from one of them and I must've dropped 80 bucks one day on loading up as much as I could possibly carry. And it was all widely varied, uh, really good product. No one, no small farm could ever grow the crazy variety of stuff that they had there. Yeah. I guess for me, I'm like, I don't want the crazy variety of stuff then. Like, but that's just my personality. That's fine. Like, yeah, um, no, I get it. It's a, it's an interesting, it is, tr- it is interesting a story. Interesting and, and I'm going to try to keep an eye on it. Red. Uh, we're flickering. I wonder what happened. Okay, gang. I have a feeling we're going to have to stop for just a minute. YouTube is not at all liking what we're sending out. Uh, if you would, we're going to drop out for just a minute. I'm going to reset some equipment to make sure it's not on our end. And uh, we will be right back. Uh, thanks for understanding. Uh, we'll be back in just a few.
But I didn't remember to play the theme. This will let me <laughs> edit it easier later. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we're good now. Hopefully. Oh my god. Oh yeah. We even picked up where we left off. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. I've learned how I've learned how to do that now. You gotta change the name and it'll it'll stop the file. But if you don't change the name it'll it'll keep picking up. That's cool. Okay, so we're back. We got green lights. Mm -hmm. I think it was just the poor old router was begging for mercy. But we had uh, wrapped up Let's see, we wrapped up talking about the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I'll edit in somewhere around <laughs> here. Yay! <laughs> DJ Ray sees us. Excellent. Glad we're back. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, the farmer's market bylaws do require locally grown produce to be labeled as such, but some vendors, that's not always the case. I'd say all vendors. Uh, I would say, too, <laughs> because, because I, I don't know of any I've gone to yeah. that have had it very clearly labeled. It may have been in tiny little letters on a card underneath the stuff. Which is, is also super shady. Yeah. Don't do that. Um, but they're encouraging the development of a task force to monitor the market and create suggestions. And uh, and, and they're going to be looking at changing the bylaws to, imp to improve it for the local experience. You know, if... If it does limit it, maybe that'll make more people grow stuff. Because, you know, I, were you around, I guess it was last summer, the summer of 2016, uh, there was a meeting held by a bunch of locals who wanted to grow more urban gardens, mm -hmm. uh, more grow more produce downtown on these empty lots. And they were trying to match people that owned empty lots with people that were willing to work it. Mm -hmm. And so you bring the two together for free, and they share in the profits of, of the... Uh, the crop and so a lot of that kind of stuff would be great if they could bring it to the farmer's yeah. market but you have to pay to get in you have to transport and store and process time investment so it's yeah. a little a little complex although i wish what i wish we had done not we but like what i wish more people did downtown is um roof gardening yeah um, yeah. and doing, cause that not only helps, um, get food, you know, grow your own food, but, um, it also helps, um, with heating and cooling costs. Right. If you have turf on your, yep. on your roof. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I used to, uh, work at a place, uh, in Knoxville mm -hmm. that had done that and it was amazing. It was an old, old building. Yeah. And it really made a difference. And it, I mean, it's good for the environment. Uh, it says in other farmers market news, Shipley said reimbursements through the EBT pharmacy and double dollars program grew tremendously from $8,000 last year to $41,000 this year at the farmers market. Pretty impressive. Is that maybe that's the new building that they moved into? Maybe that's just mm -hmm. them processing more sales, but yeah. that is a huge increase in sales. Uh, just through EBT, of course, I guess if you don't have the ability to process it, yeah. that could have been what everybody wanted to spend last year. Yeah. We're just not capable of it. Yeah. This one bugged me. Yeah, this one bugs me too. And and this is this story is one that this place, I'm, I've known people that work there over mm -hmm. the years, and I've known people that quit working there because they weren't happy with yeah. the conditions. Yeah. Uh, an exotic pet store owner uh, allegedly cited for unclean conditions uh, looking at the Johnson City Press Was he uh, charged with animal cruelty? He was cited with 35 counts of animal cruelty. Uh, they say that the animal, the, the snakes were in their own skins and filth and mm -hmm. uh, the fish tanks were so like uh, overgrown with algae and, you couldn't yeah. see the fish uh, and you know, more power to them for charging them with a with a separate count on each one of them. I am so happy they did that. Yeah. And in the state of Tennessee now, if you are successfully charged with animal cruelty, you have to sign up on like a registry. Oh, really? Yeah. I'd missed that. We are the oh, first wow. state in the country to make animal cruelty a register, like a sex That's registry. That's great. So That's great. Those people amazing. should not be allowed to have no, I agree. animals. And, and since they can't they can't legally say you can't have animals. That's the next yeah. best thing. Exactly. But at least know who you, who you need to keep an eye on. Yeah. 
Well, they, he says in in his defense, he said that uh, he's the only person working there, and he had just bitten off too, more than he could chew, and was just not physically able to take care of all the pets at once. But he now had, should we? Yeah, should we say where it is? Yeah, that's that's, that's fine. I mean, they were cited. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's it a matter of newspaper. record. Yeah. Um, it was Village Pets down on um, say, Market, Street. Market Street next to the cottage. And that place has been there for years, years, years. It's changed hands a few times. I bought a bunny there once, actually. Um, not the bunny I have now, but I bought a bunny there once because it was living in a cage. Like a full bunny was living in a cage about this big. Aww. And I bought it because I just felt yeah. so awful for it. <clears throat> Um, that place's reputation was not good even before yeah. its current owner had it. It's always been a. I, I have a problem with pet stores in general. Yeah. When I was a kid, I loved the pet store in the mall yeah. in Johnson City. Oh, I did too. I lived to go there because my dad worked at Sears. I grew up in that mall, and so I was always there. And I started realizing one day that the the quality of care went down, and I started confronting these people because I was there all the time, and these people were new, yeah. <laughs> and it turned out they just didn't care, and I really. I mean, yeah. I, I lost a lot of friends that day, but I learned that sometimes it's more important to do the right thing, and they they were forced to clean the place up. I, but yeah, this uh, I, I I do not like the excuse I bit off more than I can chew because that's that's if you're not taking care of things after fifteen to twenty warnings, if after, you're not taking care of things, and if you're not if you have living things that you're supposed to be taking care of, right sort that shit out. It's not like you just forgot to put the cans on the shelf because right. you didn't have enough manpower. The, the article does state that the animals that were alive, because some of the fish were found dead in the tanks, but the animals that were alive were healthy and, and they were fine. Yeah. They were just living in deplorable conditions. That's, yeah. And That's so awful. it was only a matter of time. Yeah. And once it get Once conditions get so bad, those animals are going to get sick yeah. eventually. Yeah, for real. And did it say fish? Because it looked like it just said... Yeah. Uh, oh, said Bert. The tanks were not cleaned properly. Well, no, no, no. There was another thing that just said there were some dead oh. animals. So I didn't think it was just fish. Uh, um, wait, I just read it here. But it said birds were without water in their tanks. Or in their cages. There was, oh. there was a... a it's such a sore article. It's so funny. Thomas said there were. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm. You're right. Yeah. Maybe maybe I assumed because he said uh, there were several dead animals in some of the tanks. I I, I jumped to the conclusion of fish. Yeah. But so, they yeah, had different. It was, pro it was probably. It could have been uh, reptiles too. Yeah, or even well, like I said, that rabbit I bought was living in a fish tank that big. Yeah. So it's also possible that there were other dead animals. <laughs> DJ Ray uh, had, had said earlier. Sorry, DJ Ray. We were. We were in the zone. Uh, he used to work at the actual farmer's market. Ah. Uh, That's cool. And it's, a, it's I go there very regularly. Yeah. I, I like it a lot. I buy a lot of cool, kooky stuff there. A lot of overpriced stuff at the Asheville's Farmer's Market. Well, that's just Asheville. But that's an Asheville <laughs> thing. And, and DJ Ray says Prince bought a pet in Asheville. What was it? Do you know? You're talk we're talking Prince Rogers Nelson here, right? Not like the Prince of... Some fancy nation. Or Prince. Right. Or is that what's that full name? You know, when we hung out, he was Prince Rogers Oh, Nelson, I see. You know. He didn't have a symbol yet. <laughs> he wasn't formally known as. <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure it's that Prince. That's interesting. I don't know what it was. But yeah, that's that. I, I hope that place just closes. Yeah, they've been there forever, but yeah. if nothing else, you know, hand it off to somebody else. Yeah, exactly. Um, and this is where we ended up in yeah, the right, uh, last Thursday. episode. Yeah, uh, fifteen into with I and I didn't say what it was, and you revealed it. I know. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're fine. I, I, I should have said what it was. Sharps Deli downtown. Yeah. Now Sharps Deli rolling back the clock again because mm -hmm. I'm Mr. Old Timey. Four years ago, mm -hmm. I'm at a Blue Plum. Maybe more. Maybe maybe five years ago, I'm at a Blue Plum uh, when it was just Blue Plum. No other festivals. And it was a really good one. I was announcing some roller derby. Mm -hmm. uh, went around to the uh, Market Street side. And there's an awning. Actually, I'll show you what it looks like. If I can dig it out here. Oh, no. I think I broke it. Oh, that's weird. 
There we go. There. <laughs> uh, th there's this awning. Yeah. Said Sharps Deli, and I was like, oh, that looks fantastic. And they were open. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't have glass in the building. It was just an open front, and these people were in this empty shell of a building frying up burgers on a cart. Mm -hmm. And I talked to them, and I'm like, this is awesome. Are you guys opening anytime soon? Yeah, we should be open by the fall. Mm -hmm. Four years later, finally they opened. Uh, the, the, the awning had actually gotten uh, algae on yeah. the top of it by the time they opened. Uh, they opened up. It's a nice little deli. I went there. I ate there with a friend. I mean, it's a deli. It's yeah. I can't say that it's a... It's, it's not a, a fancy big city deli. It's not uh, it's a deli. Jersey Mike's. It's a deli. And uh, the food's pretty good. I have not been able to catch it open in like two years that they've been down there now. I go by, and it's me. I'm sure I'm just hitting it the wrong time, but yeah. I know at least once I was looking at their hours on the internet, and they weren't open. That's so odd. And I don't understand what. Is it me? Because every time I go past there, they're open. Yeah. And oh, I drive like... by now, and I'll see the open sign on, but I can't go in then. Yeah. But when I have time, it seems like they're never open. Yeah. But, uh... They won the uh, chili the chili cook off last Friday. I went. I was downtown briefly for uh, first Friday. I was there to uh, met some friends. They gave me a Disney tie. <laughs> what are you doing? Come downtown. We have something for you. It's a Disney tie. It was pretty cool. So I, I got a new tie out of it. Uh, I don't know. I was not in a very social mood. Mm -hmm. I tried to eat it. I tried to eat at Mid City for uh, dinner. It was packed. Yep. I got a table, and I just kind of lost interest and left. It was, just, yeah. it was nothing against Mid-City. They were fine. I was just not in a yeah. headspace to wait like I normally am. So I just left and went and got... I ate at uh, Portobello's. I did eat at a new place. I ate uh, at Portobello's. Portobello's is pretty good. It was, it was okay. They, If you are looking for a restaurant job, Portobello's will put you to work immediately because they were so overwhelmed. Oh, no. The... Uh, the owner was hosting, which mm. was not his best. That was not. I don't think that's his strong suit. Uh, but he was hosting, and and two servers were covering a full restaurant. Jeez. And it was people were getting the wrong stuff, and the apparently there was chaos in the kitchen because they I just know what happened. Things kept going wrong. I would you could you, you know when things are going so bad, you hear the voices getting raised, and it was yeah. But. My, I got exactly what I ordered. It was hot. It was it was tasty uh, spaghetti get? and meatballs. Oh. Can't go wrong with the classics. Yeah. And most of the other stuff had a lot of cheese on it. Yeah. But uh, it was it was fine. It was a decent marinara sauce. Yeah. The the little bit of cheese I had on top of it was uh, beautifully toasted. Mm -hmm. I I had a good time. It was tough getting out of there. Yeah. Because everybody's running around trying to get people seated, and it was hard to get somebody to to uh, take the check. But we yeah. worked it out. So the my server ended up actually running my card too but uh that was kind of nice that yeah. was uh portobello's it's it's yeah i've been a few times uh my family likes it and i i think it's pretty good it's uh i'm with you i'm not actually a huge italian food fan yeah not because the cheese i just it just tends to not be my yeah. favorite but i can eat there pretty pretty happily yeah pretty good. yeah that's really the the big the, the big new thing that i tried this week uh i had a a comically bad trip to a Chinese buffet, but I'm not gonna, t I'm not gonna talk bad about people on off days. It was, it was an off day. Boy, was it an off day. Uh, Let's see, what else oh, we got? Oh, what else we got? Rolling the, uh, rolling the wheel. Rolling the wheel. Oh, this oh. is. I just thought this was kind of an interesting forum. It was a a, a newspaper. It's about. It's like a letter to the editor. It's a letter to the editor, and it's an interesting point. Uh, you know, when you're in public talking mm -hmm. crap about people and talking insensitively about accidents and stuff, people are listening. Yeah. And it, it very well could be someone uh, is being affected adversely by your loud cell phone conversation about yeah. a sensitive, you know, being insensitive to a subject there's a sensitive about. I don't know, some, something about it kind of interested me at the time. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say because I, I, I think I generally agree with the point he's making. Um, at the same time, it looks like it was, I don't know. It's a, it, Some people can be really overly sensitive right. about such things. I rarely. It's hard to tell. I'm, 
I'm old timey and I wasn't really cell phones came along in my lifetime. So I kind of made up my own etiquette uh, for it. But if I'm in this example, it was in a tire, a tire, a local, local car dealership. And, uh, if I get a phone call, I'm usually walking out the door. That's what I usually do. Unless there's a good reason not yeah, to. Yeah, sometimes you just can't avoid people. If I walk right. out the door, there's going to be as many people as if I'm inside. I'll just yeah. talk on the phone. But even then, I try to keep it, you know, yeah. keep it down. And if I don't keep it down, I try to not say anything yeah. insensitive or incendiary. Yeah. And not, not in a crowd full of people because people are, are listening and... Well, the only thing I take issue with this uh, letter to the editor with is that he says, um, not, all, not only are they being what I consider rude, the rest of us are privy to the happenings of their private lives. Um, to me, that doesn't seem like your problem. If they're point, not yeah. worried about you knowing that their daughter was injured in a car wreck and they're having that conversation in public, I kind of don't see how, why it would bother you. That's a very good uh, point. I mean, even though... I, on one hand, I'm very private. Yeah. On the other hand, once I am talking about something, I really don't have any secrets about it. <laughs> yeah. It's just I, I don't share it. So even you know, I, I didn't tell a lot of people when I had a heart attack. I mm-hmm. just didn't see what it would serve other yeah. than to 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 make them treat me differently and for them to get traumatized. Yeah. But if somebody does bring it up, I'll talk about it yeah. in a, in a room full of people that don't know and. And, well, sorry. Yeah. yeah, and this guy, he goes on to say, we don't need to know these things. Well, you don't need to know these things. You don't get to choose what other people share. Right. You can't just, I mean, I hear a lot of stuff I don't want to hear, but I don't, I never think, oh, they should not talk oh, about that in public. I'm a telecom <laughs> guy. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy that's fixing the telephone yeah. in the office. I don't exist. I'm invisible. And so people talk about stuff that you should not talk about yeah. at work. Forget yeah. about around the, the phone guy. Yeah. It's it's ludicrous. But I also tend to be pretty, when it comes to stuff like that, I tend to get pretty riled up because I curse in public. I try not to curse around kids, but yeah, it happens. And I tend to, I, with anything like that, I just tend to lean far more to, you're an adult, you can handle it. Right. Like, I was out. raised to be very careful about not cursing in public mm-hmm. and so even though i am extremely good at it uh just but just from being a public speaker mm-hmm. in general I, I have a switch in my head yeah. from from baby sisters who are 10 and 12 years younger than me yeah. I, I see a kid and i cannot curse oh that's so it funny. is not even possible for me to curse that's when the ding darn it's and the doggones come oh, out oh my god I- but it's a switch that auto involuntarily flips now, and I can sort of turn it off. But my problem is, if something happens, if I hurt myself or they fall, I am automatically going to go back to oh shit. <laughs> like, I am. That's just the way my brain works. I was working on a, on a, a fence. Uh, my ex girlfriend's little girl was maybe twelve, and wham, slammed my hand with a hammer. It is one of the worst pains of my entire life. And I was ready to start cussing. I looked at the kid. Ding, dang it. Son of a biscuit eater. I could not curse. It's just the switch. Oh, my God. The breakers engage yeah. in my brain. And, and a lot of public speaking has, I've put breakers in that don't allow me to do a lot of things mm-hmm. unless I consciously decide to do it. Yeah. Because when you're when you're talking in public, you got 10,000 fans. Yeah. And your continued employment doing this relies on you never saying an inappropriate thing. That's fair. You have to have yeah. the breakers to stop it. Yeah. And that was one of the hardest walls to build, and it'll be sure. the, it'll be the last one that comes down. Yeah. I'll, I'll say something dumb and insensitive way before I say anything inappropriate. Oh, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this is just general stuff. I don't understand yeah. turkey shoots. Do they really shoot turkeys? Some of them seem to actually shoot turkeys. Some of them seem to, like, draw for frozen turkeys. Yeah, I have no idea. I've never been to one. <laughs> I've, I've, I've just never understood that. But I see them advertised all the time at churches and such. Yeah. Bristol's having pints and pros. That sounds oh. like a, a party. At Elder Brew. I've every every time I've ever gone to a, a writer's meeting, a people mm. that write and actually put out product for mm-hmm. lack of a better term 
and I like to consider myself part of that, even though my volume is very low these days. Yeah. I've written a lot of stuff in my day, and I feel very confident in my abilities. Yeah. All we... All we ever did at the one I used to go to was compare. We, we just compared ourselves to each other <laughs> and how, how our worth ec- work ethics were better than other people's and how yeah. writers are, are solitary by nature for a reason. I, t- I tend to hate those things. Yeah, um, it, was, it was miserable. We got really yeah. drunk, really drunk. Partially for me because I think, I think this is pretty natural. Anything you're doing that you love to do and that you're trying to make a life doing... You're going to, I think you're going to naturally be competitive about it. Yeah. Because you want to be the best. But I don't like, I am naturally competitive about my writing. But I don't like being in a position of feeling that. Because it makes me a dick to other people. You get defensive? Um, I get defensive and or I, think I that's get what, very critical. That's what happened when, when I went to these meetings yeah. back, back a while back. Uh, a lot of people got defensive. It's like, because I, you know, I've, I think I've said it to you. It's like, I can fart out yeah. a, a short story I'm happy with mm-hmm. in like two, three hours yeah. because it, odds are it's already floating in my head. Yeah. And they got this person got so mad at me yeah. and completely dismissed any possible quality I could yeah. have without having any knowledge of me, my style, now my I, writing. Yeah, and I, that that sounds like something I would do. No, yeah. I wouldn't. It happens a lot. <laughs> it wouldn't be malicious. No, but, I don't. I, I don't take it personally. But like, anymore. um. There's a reason why the only people who get to read my stuff are, or at first, are my friends. Because they can give me feedback without me going, you know, you don't know. You're right. just, because I'm like, well, they know me. Then, right. You know. But, and I, I don't mean, I try to be better about it. I mean, my thing's a short but, story. Mine, by definition, is made to be brief and made yeah. to be clear. And at any time, I have, yeah. I have ten stories in my head. Just waiting. It's like, will this be the day that I actually get time to sit down and do this? Yep. No, I have too many other things going on. Or, man, no, I need to do this one thing and actually complete it. <laughs> but that's all That's all the uh, oh, old messages oh. we got. Yeah. I wondered how we had gotten back to the wizard onesies. The wizard onesies. Now, this one, um, I, kinda, this one I kinda like. That's just the same. Yeah, but they got, st- I'll give them style points. Let's see if we can Let's load see. it up. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, you can't quite see it. It's so tiny. Yeah. But he's just chilling. Got it the wizard little, hoodie up. Yeah. I have a friend. She's a, a a professional cosplay artist, I guess is the best way to put it. She not only would make her own awesome cosplays, she, was, uh, she mastered sewing at a very mm. young age. When she went to college, her art for her, even even her final BFA show, her art was taking clothing and mixing it with technology into the coolest mm. things. So she made this beautiful wedding dress. It looked like a figure that was doing this. It had a proximity sensor. As you got closer to it, the heart would start beating. Huh. And when you got right up to it, it was yeah. just fluttering. Huh. And, and it also had lights in yeah. the chest that would pulse. Very cool. And, oh, it was amazing. And she had uh, some other, other pe- with some other dresses mm-hmm. and... They were somewhere between dresses and sculptures, and all of them had some kind of electric with yeah. sensors in them that would make them behave in certain ways when you figured out yeah. how to interact. And all of them were about anxiety. Yeah, uh, and that's that was kind of her thing. Hmm. And she she was very very serious anxiety yeah. problems, but this was her way of dealing with it. And she went on. Now she is booked up for at least the rest of the issue that's this cool. year and next year designing cosplay costumes yeah. for people. And. I kick myself. When she was just out of school, she had plenty of time on her hands. Mm-hmm. She offered to make me the ultimate wizard robe. And it was going to be pricey. Mm-hmm. But it's not unreasonably pricey. And it would have lights in the sleeves. Yeah. It would have secret ways to make lights yeah. come on with, with, with just secret hand gestures yeah. and stuff. And it would have a hem that would always point north. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. She had all of these. It was going to be tricked out. I just... I got to pay the bills. Yeah. I got medical bills now, so it's a drag. But one day, one day when one I hit day. it big, I'm, I'm. People go out and buy new cars. They He's go out get and a I'm onesie. buying a wizard robe. Yeah. It's a robe. Robe. That's right. It's light blue, like Usador's. Like the light Usador. blue. <laughs> and Usador the lighter blue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my goodness gracious. Well, we had a couple technical glitches, but it wasn't yeah. too much. No. But I Not think bad. that's going to bring us to the end of another one. Yeah, I think so. It's been a good time. I'm going to head downtown. It's mm -hmm. currently, it's actually last Thursday. Yeah. And tonight's uh, uh, kind of a time fundraiser for, for John Boy. I'm going to go down there yeah. and drop off some change and say hey to some folks. Mm -hmm. um, coming up in the next week, I got nothing. I got nowhere to be. I've yeah. got, I've picked up one gig and yeah. i haven't confirmed it yet but it's going to be uh, hosting a burlesque show Ooh. in Asheville. uh nothing like girls dancing in their skimpies to make you look forward to going to work that's right well <laughs> actually well that sort of reminded me but this is the first time i've ever remembered it is tuesday which ah. means tomorrow wednesday the 16th yeah no 15th wednesday's 15th wednesday the 15th Tomorrow at 8 p.m. is Open Door Poetry at the next door by Acoustic Coffee House. We usually start at like 8.15 or 8.30 because we're all poets and <laughs> or whatever. It's a miracle to get them all in one place at one time. It really is. But it's a lot of fun. You come, you get beer. You don't have to get beer, but most of us gets, get beer. Get on stage, read some poems. It's just a good old time. So come out, do that. It's fun. Lots of good stuff going on. Yep. We will see you again next week for episode 16. Be thinking about what the title for episode 15 was. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Or I, I would have mentioned it here if we had any idea whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Until next week, thanks for keeping it local. It's hometown, mm -hmm. East Tennessee. We'll be seeing you. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, look. It's been so long. So I've been doing this right for so many weeks. Here, which one? Which button is it? Oh, there it is.